Welcome back. So I just explained that we need CRUD in our REST API. We need to be able to get customers. We need to be able to create new customers, uh, update customers and delete customers. How do we do that? Well, the cool thing is if we go back to our code, the REST API we built earlier right here, you know what? It has something called a values controller. And the values controller actually, in this case, it's values will change that into actually having customers. But this guy actually provides access to all the methods. It has a get request, another get request. So this is all the values. This is for a specific ID. And here we have a post request for creating new values. And we have an ID actually for putting new values in there. And we have a delete for actually deleting a value. So what we're going to do later is we're going to create a customer controller because in here we're going to need a controller this guy is going to be a controller for each of the different entities that we want to share with the world. So if you have a pet you want to share with the world, you're going to make a pet controller. If you have a customer you want to share with the world, you're going to build a customer's controller, right? But right now, the default setup, the default solution project that we built has a values controller, so we have something that we can try out and see if it works. So how do we do that? How do we try it out? Well, I'm going to do one thing because I said to you guys earlier that it didn't matter with the HTTPS. Well, actually, we are using some HTTPS redirection here in line 43 inside your startup file. I'm just going to outcome that because I don't want to be redirected right now. We'll do that later, but I just want this will confuse you for now. So let's just outcome this for now. It just means that we can go into localhost without HTTPS. And that's a huge help when we want to test this. So let me just try and run this now. Give it a second or two. So it launches the application here. And we want to go to this address right here. Um, and if, if it didn't launch, by the way, you have to set it as the startup project. So I'll just run this as the startup project, by the way. So if it didn't launch, you have to do that. So I'll say right here, I want to copy this unsafe path right here, localhost port 5000. I'm going to put that into my Chrome and hopefully I'm getting back. Right now, I didn't find anything. What I'll do is I'll do a front slash API slash values and notice what I'm getting. And just to prove to you that I'm actually hitting that breakpoint right there, um, I'm going to go back and I'm actually going to go into my code right here and put in a breakpoint. Here it is. This is where I expect I'm ending up. And I'm going to refresh the page right here. And what is actually happening is if I was actually debugging, which I will now, stop and rerun. So now what will happen is when I do the refresh, you'll actually see me stopping at this breakpoint right here. Let me try and do that. Refresh again. And Bajumi, I'm at the breakpoint, and you'll notice that this is the exact place I got to because this is a GET request that I'm sending to the path um, called values. So slash API slash values. Jumping back to my browser, I can prove this to you by going into uh, developer tools again. And here I'll do a network, and let me just try and continue the code and then just remove the breakpoint and refresh this just to show you guys the event. Notice right here, I'm sending a request, a GET request to this path right here, because that's the path I put inside the browser up here. And if you notice again, it's called localhost 5000, which is just because I'm testing locally right now. But this is the path I'm looking for. And if I go into the code, there's no magic. It actually says API slash and then the name of the controller, which is values. Okay, so that's why I'm hitting this exact route right here. And that just means I'm going into this code that we see right here. And in that code, I'm looking for a very specific part called get request. And there's nothing else. There's no ID in the, in the request because then it would look like this. And that means that I'm going to hit this exact method right here that just returns a string. But the cool thing is the string is actually returned as JSON, not string. So we'll dive more into that. But you just start your first REST API. Hooray. See you in the next lesson. Have fun.